Okay, this uh, is a place called uh, www.grand-illusions.com, and he's going to show um, this particular is a is a uh, plastic ring with a set of magnets and a big magnet in the center, which creates what I believe is the quantum effect. Now I'm going to show it, and then I'll tell you about it. You see that? Look. It was attracted and it stopped. It's being repelled. There's about a eight or quarter inch air gap there now where it can't get any closer, but not further away either. That's absolutely amazing. All right, I'm going to just stop it right there because that's all we have to see. But you see where that thing is sitting? It's right between these two. Well, actually, you do have to see some more because as he rotates it, that will follow between this this vector point or whatever you want to call it, that pinch point. Still maintaining which means another one would be able to go here, but it would oppose that one. So they would begin to create a ring. That ring would have another ring come to it, but they would be opposed. Is it kind of okay, so well, and you could buy this from them. I think they're, uh, I don't really know how much they are, but you can go to their Grand Illusion. It's fabulous stuff. Anyway, um, what you would end up having is a set of, of, um, uh, of um, electrons in their orbitals, all of them being opposed by the central point, and then these would oppose the additional, and they would layer in the quantum states. Now that's what I've always been saying, and I've and, and what I'm saying is that the neutrons in in the core are not nu neutral; they're negative, and that's why this is a massive particle in the center with a slight negative inclination, which holds everything in its orbitals. And, and I, in the structure I can't account for. And then there is another problem that we run into is that this is on a plane, a flat plane. Now that's not what we see in nature, and in nature there's a ball here. But I think the ball may account for the nature of the spinning electron in space because it's going to try to chase itself somehow. I, I, I can't really understand this, that's why I need somebody with more intelligence than I have to figure this out. But the central core here is going to be a round ball of magnetism that exceeds the, ma the, the negativeness of its positiveness. So it attracts with its positiveness and it repels with its excessive negativeness, which creates this gap. And then it creates additional gaps as they stack up, trying to get into that core. And then after that, these outer ones will attach to other outer cores of other similar devices like this that have maybe more or less central core magnets or electrons. I mean, I don't know how the thing is built. I have no clue about this. That's why I want somebody to figure this out. Because especially when you start to get into a cylindrical shape, which that's... But I'm, I, I can't imagine it's going to be flat. I, I imagine it's going to be a round sort of structure of some nature. Maybe it'll be a crystal cube or hexagon, but it'll be like a, a bucky ball or some something similar to that. And then these things are going to be floating around, and somehow there's going to be a chase going on. Because that is what I'm going to show you in a second here, which is what we, uh, Rod Warren and I, do uh, experiments and and. and I do the theory and uh, vortex theory and all that business, and and um, he's taking pictures of what I think are exactly what I'm speaking of. So let's look at those. All right, um, this is um, on YouTube, and this is by David Lapointe, The Primer Fields Part One. Now, I am going to talk about this. This is Thomas Young, and he did the double slit experiment. And uh, I, we have done the same experiment, Rodney Warren and I, and I'm going to discuss that in a second. ...light in 1803 with his famed double slit experiment. And ever since then, the world's top minds have debated what the results of this experiment actually mean. Although Young's double slit experiment is repeated many times every day, we are always left with the same perplexing question that goes to the core of quantum mechanics and even our very understanding of matter. Listen carefully. Is light a particle or a wave? 
Experiments have revealed that light has the properties of both a particle and a wave, but how can it be both a particle and a wave? So then we find this to be the case for all electromagnetic radiation and all matter. All right. Is light a particle or a wave? Well, it's a particle and it's a wave at the same time, and I'll demonstrate that to you. Coming out of the sun, we know that energy is coming out in the form of something, and we know when it hits the earth, it turns into electricity and heat and light and all that business. So, it's not nothing in between, it's obviously something in between. What it is, is when the sun gets so excited and the outer electrons get so shaky and vibrating, and I'll display this in a minute in some different way, they become uh, free and they, they just shoot off into space in spinning, violently spinning, and the faster they spin, the more angular momentum, the more angular momentum, the more mass, the more mass, the more impact. That's when you get into the higher frequencies of light that hurt things, the lower frequencies spin slowly and they don't hurt things. But from here to here, you have a frequency, slow frequency, fast frequency. Higher frequencies of light and hurting things, lower frequencies of light and hurting things. But between here and here, it is dark energy and dark matter. It is an electron spinning into space. And the same thing happens over here. It's re-radiated from here. It bounces off. And that's all that happens here. And I'll explain that in a, well, I'll explain it in a different manner. But first of all, just to show you what light is, this literally is light. It's a particle. And when it shoots out of the sun, tush, it comes out of that sun like this, a particle spinning in a right-hand spin, and we photographed this, I'll show you that. And it spins, and it's dark because it has nothing to hit up on, no nucleated stuff. It's spinning with a whole bunch of other ones out there, but they have no nucleus with a cloud of electrons to bounce into. And sooner or later it comes to the Earth and it goes boing and it hits a, another cloud of electrons. One of them bounces this way, one of them bounces that way. And this thing shakes and it's heat. So you got heat and light. Case closed. Alright, very few people know me at all, but the ones that do know me normally know me from the uh, what you see down here, the rocks and so forth. And that's what I do is mud fossils normally. But I do all kinds of stuff. Now, this here is what I want you to show you is about the um, about matter and matter matters and it matters a lot so let's see what the matter with matter is because there is something to matter with the way we think about matter so let's get into this matter all right now vibration works in matter and it can be click and it just sort of bounces around but if you vibrate carefully you can make a uh, what they call a resonant vibration Ooh. and if you have it fast enough it will it will vibrate electrons in their orbit and they will vibrate and it will vibrate so intensely see this is an angstrom unit first of all they're supposed to be only here and they never go any further than that and it's like on a string you hear a string theory I don't think it pertains to this thing but let's go with this there's a string here that holds it there and it's can't it shouldn't go anywhere else you saw the magnets are supposed to stay at a certain distance but if you start vibrating this with electricity it'll go and it'll start to go a, a angstrom units plus angstrom units are little tiny things and the angstrom units now will become shaking and it will bring it in and out and it'll, it'll be getting very very excited and doing all kinds of crazy shaking things now if you get angstrom unit plus 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 frequencies eventually that's going to take off into space spinning now I don't know why they spin specifically but it has something to do with these toroidal coils and you're going to see that coming up I believe that it will be a little while no so anyway the angstrom unit is a quantum distance which is stable a plus is the excited vibration unit, which it's, it's here and it's warm and it does all that kind of stuff. And then A plus 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 is when it gets, becomes a free electron that goes off into space as light. And then when it hits something, it vibrates the thing it hits. See, this is what a normal um, atom looks like. 
Now they have all kind of number of, of electrons and number of what they call protons and neutrons. The neutrons are not neutrons. They're not neutral. They're negatrons. They're negative. And I'm going to show you about that in a second. Now, you have the core and then you have your electrons and there's like two right up close to it and then you have a, they start to go in, in layers of eight and then they get bigger and bigger and bigger. But anyway, the key is, is just you, you saw in that magnetic deal, the center is, is heavily a positive, so it wants to draw in electrons which are negative, but it's also excessively negative. So it has a little bit extra negative charge. And why does it have an extra negative charge? Well, here's the distance. I mean, here's the reason. All right, the reason is, and now we're going to call the neutrons negatrons, so forget neutrons, they're gone. The charge on a proton is one uh, it's a positive charge, and it's 1.672, just go with that. Then you've got the negative charge on what used to be a neutron, they thought it had no charge, well it obviously has a charge. And this is negative, and that's 1.674, which is two thousandths heavier. Now, an electron is only one eighteen hundredth of the size of these things. So this, they consider this insignificant in the smallest particle. Well, it's not insignificant and it's got something, it's not just a single particle either, I don't think. But that I can't prove either. Now, so forget neutrons, they're gone. And the reason that protons are always glued to negatrons, which are their partner, used to be called neutrons, are because that they're positive and they're negative. Duh! And the excess weight of the negatron, which is always at least the same as the proton, so you always have a negative excessive core, which is the nucleus, and that's it. The conclusion is that the excessive weight, and therefore the excessive charge of the negatron, creates a quantum distance. And that electron cannot penetrate down to the core because the core is excessively negative. But it is also just a slight bit less positive. So it tries to do both and you end up with a stuck electron. And that's the quantum. So they collect in layers the end. All right, this pretty much exp ex explains how this process works. This is a disk of light, and they appear to be disks. Now, I don't know whether they're spinning so fast that they look like a disk or what the case is, but they come out in these disks, and I'll show you a lot of this in a second. Now, that disk normally is nice rounded disk. You see what happens being sucked into this accelerator that Rod has created, and it, it literally excites the, the particles so excited that they, they, they increase in frequency and therefore literally mass and therefore energy and therefore color and they go into white and as they come out of the accelerator you can see they almost abruptly transition down to a, a lower power and then you see them trail off and they will begin to to go back to their red circular disk formations I'll show you that in a second all right, that's what a single disk normally looks like. Now, I, I don't know whether they're spinning so fast that we see this as a disk or not, but I, I'll show you a bunch of things. You make up your own mind. All right, this appears to be key, that the individual particles have this type of a magnetic field. And instead of a bar magnet shape, it has this, and he'll explain this. Here it goes. So until now, we have incorrectly assumed that electrons and other matter have a magnetic field shape as shown in this drawing. That's a bar magnet. But we must realize that the fields around an electron, as well as around all other matter, are actually two opposing bowl-shaped electromagnetic fields. Unless we properly understand this basic magnetic field structure, we will never be able to properly understand the fundamental forces of matter from the subatomic to the galactic. This is basically a In twirl. this presentation, you will be shown that correcting this one basic misunderstanding of magnetic field also explains most all of our problems in physics and astrophysics. Okay, that's what I want us to talk about. I believe that this may... Alright, you saw those bowl-shaped um, toroid... Uh, magnets. 
Now, this is an accelerator that Rod Warren has set up, and he has sent me these pictures very graciously, shared his, his knowledge with me, and I'm not, I won't tell you how he's doing this, but uh, I understand it now. And what he does is he, is he accelerates light, and as it speeds out of the accelerator, it comes out in chaos, and then for two, it appears to be two cycles, you get this little atomic looking thing. And it just happens, uh, you know, and, and it's, it doesn't matter what color the laser is that he's using. Now, Rod is not using anything special here. Now, I'm going to see um, if, uh, let's see, there, I have a whole bunch of, color, of uh, pictures here that Rod sends me. And uh, there's another one here that is... Um, All right, here it is right here. This, this really explains it. This pretty much does it. All right, now, what you see in the front of you there is the Venturi uh, uh, effect accelerator is over here. And what that is doing, oh, well, all right, this is light right at the, the uh, accelerator is right down here. And as it comes through, you can see it's accelerated very brightly white. And I think that might be Cherienko radiation, but I can't prove that. Then it, it starts decelerating, and then you get into these end up these spinning disks. And the spinning disks are the particles of light. It, it was sometimes it appears to me. All right, here's the same phenomena in uh, the green um, laser, and there's the two um, atomic-looking particles. Now this is a truly interesting looking one. These are trails of, of spinning disc plates uh, from above it appears. Uh, you know, sometimes they're taken this way, sometimes above. Now, these are, you see this little dot, I believe, is the particle. And as you can see, it's drifting to the left. That indicates a right-hand spin, which is what they say uh, the uh, light particles do. And these are tubes, literal tubes, of light. And they now say that it's somewhere over in England or, or uh, Scotland, somewhere like that. They just claim they, they discovered tubes of light, which we've seen for years here. And you can see that they are compacting after coming out of the accelerator. You see them? They're crunching down. See it? That's just what it is. I'm showing you what we got, and you can make up your own determination what you think it is. That's a green disc shower right after the accelerator.